My word is James Bond, I stay on the mission. Coming for the top position, ain't no competition, man. Pull up in the top, it's missing. Fuck the opposition, in. All that lane switching, this is what the game is. To. It's the young, incredible, honestly unforgettable. You would do like Chappelle's show. This so perennial, do this for my millennials. I be murdering any flow. I just had to let you know. It's the young, incredible, honestly unforgettable. You would do like Chappelle's show. This so perennial, do this. Hey, everybody, it's the coach. This is Madden Football on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we'll see the veteran Philip Rivers and the Los Angeles Chargers as they match up with the longtime Raven Joe Flacco and his new team the Denver Broncos. I'll be back with you again with scores around the league at halftime. But kickoff right around the corner. And standing by to call the action, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Coach, we find ourselves at the foot of the Rockies, Denver, Colorado, for this edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Just a short time ago, sounds loud enough to reverberate across the Rockies. They're ready for football in Denver as the Broncos get set to do battle with Phillip Rivers and the Los Angeles Chargers. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, look, some might say that football is a young man's fancy, so to speak. But don't tell that to these two quarterbacks because they come in here with a lot, and I mean a lot, of NFL experience. Hey, I like the Young Turks. I like the Baker Mayfields. I like the Patrick Mahomes. I like the Lamar Jacksons. But I do like those grizzled veterans who know how to play the game, know how to run their team, and know how to handle difficult situations. Maybe I'm just showing my age, too. turn to December and we're in the home stretch now as we're underway in week 13 and as we see so frequently here in Colorado that one over the end line so it'll come out to the 25 the Broncos head out for their first drive and at the controls in his first season in the Mile High City a former Super Bowl champion in Joe Flacco and in Baltimore they drafted Lamar Jackson eventually he would take over for Flacco week 10 a season ago so Flacco out well, the Broncos said, we still think he has some time left in his career. They bring him in for some stability at quarterback, something that they really haven't had in Denver since the departure of Peyton Manning after their victory in Super Bowl 50. It's a loss of four on that first play, and it's second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. Chargers able to get the pressure and bring him down. Melvin Ingram in there to get him, and that is sack number six now for him on the year. Two plays so far, run and a pass attempt, and both have gone backwards. Probably not how they drew that up. Not at all. <laughs> Looking for a better play coming up on third. Now after the sack, Flacco and the Broncos come up third and long. Here's Flacco off the play fake to Lindsey. And the catch made. This is Emmanuel Sanders. And he'll be about a full yard shy of the 20 at the 19-yard line. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. you got to go up and make the tackle right away. That'll be a 43-yard punt, just a single yard on the return. And it'll be Charger football here as they take over. So here come the Chargers as they get set for their first drive. They will be led out by their veteran quarterback now in his 16th season from NC State, Phillip Rivers. You talk about the pause that refreshes. I think it's come at a perfect time of the year for them, hasn't it? You know, they, it's the season is starting to wind down, got a little bit of a break. But how about the guy calling the signals? 
he's got to be excited about that because now he didn't just get a game plan for one week. He's able to work on it for two weeks. I can't wait to see if they have anything special in, in store for him today. Well, last year, Henry really looked poised for a prime breakout season, but then May 22nd, tore his ACL during OTAs, ruled out for the year. Actually was added to the active roster in a pretty heroic return for their playoff clash with New England, but did not play. 29 career games for Henry, 12 touchdowns, and now with Antonio Gates' career coming to a close, they expect a lot out of the 24-year-old Hunter Henry. Rivers throws there, complete to Allen, and they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Charger first down. Now Gordon on first down. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Off the play fake here, Rivers. That's complete to Williams out of the backfield. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. First down goal at the 6-yard line. First and goal, Melvin Gordon. And he's in for a Charger touchdown. Melvin Gordon, his 11th touchdown of the year. As his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. The touchdown giving him the first quarter lead. Remember, they lost a rough game two weeks ago. Then they had to sit through the open week, but a good start here. And just think about everyone around them, everyone around the organization. When you lose headed into that open week, everyone's cringing because you don't have a chance to get on the horse and ride it again for at least two weeks. Well, they were able to take that time, use it constructively, and now they're back in form. That time, a six-play drive, and it's capped off by a touchdown run coming from Melvin Gordon. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. And Denver getting set to take the field. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Broncos first down. Flacco fakes the give, sets to throw. And that'll wind up incomplete. Try to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. Yeah, let's look quickly here at the Denver offense. And how about Philip Lindsay's rookie season? Began the year third on the depth chart, finished it in the Pro Bowl. Not bad for an unrestricted free agent out of Colorado with speed to burn. On second down now, it's Lindsay, And not even back to the line of scrimmage this time as they're on him quickly once more. That'll be a loss of four yards on the play. And that'll force upon him a third and 14. Flacco looks to throw. Got a man open. It's Sutton. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense. Well, they stopped him shy of the marker. Thought they were bringing up fourth down. And then that penalty. Let's face it. They thought they had bent, but could absorb that, right? Instead, they broke as a result of their own penalty. Now Flacco. That's complete to Jake Butt. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Give him 14 yards there on a Denver first down. Operating off play action, Flacco. And that's complete to the tight end, Hireman. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. Now a look at the Chargers starting 11 on defense. They're a top five unit right now against the pass in the league. In fact, they sit at number five. And I'm struggling a little bit trying to really categorize this crew. They're top ten in the league against the pass, but the bottom half of the league in sacking the quarterback. That doesn't make sense. Imagine if this group ever put pressure on the QB. They'd easily move into the top five. Here's Freeman. 
And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. He's able to rattle off six on the carry, and that'll get him to third and four. On third down, Freeman. And he will take it in for a Bronco touchdown. Royce Freeman, his fifth touchdown now on the year. As his guys are on the board here in this first quarter. And they're able to run it in. It started with a battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how are we going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. Extra point from McManus is good, and we are tied at seven. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. This one taken just inside the 10. And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Here's the Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points... It's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to... Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Bradley Chubb, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. Two sacks last week, another one right here. He's been unblockable lately, and I think that goes all the way back to not just his offseason, but the film study he's been doing during the week because I think he's found matchups that he likes, and he's capitalizing. And a few times, he's even defeated double teams. He doesn't care at this point. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. Rivers going to turn and give this one to his running back, Gordon. They get five yards on the run there. Still left staring at a third and about 14. And the offensive starters here for Los Angeles. One thing for us to keep in mind and remember, they're coming off of their open week last week. They got to sit home and relax a little bit before the final stretch of the season. They got the lucky draw because every team in the league wants to have that open week later in the year rather than early, they benefited. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. Here's Tyler Newsom now. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. And they work this well upfield across the 45. 28 yards the gain there on the catch and run. But when you hit him on the move like that, he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam. Oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Now Flacco. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Now it's Flacco. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. So now third and ten. A big play to start the drive, but nothing since. Flacco. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Intended for Andre Incomplete. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. 
think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before and realize it hasn't worked go to so something well. Else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. A toss play, Gordon. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. 18 big yards on that one and a charger first. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now a carry by the third year man. This is Austin Eckler. Not much there, maybe a couple up to the 35. On second down, they'll run with Gordon. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. So following the run by Gordon, here's first and 10. Going to give this time to the tailback. And he's got it across midfield and into Denver territory. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Play fake, Rivers, he'll rifle this one deep right. He's got it, hit the 15. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. And that goes for a gain of 31. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays... Let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. Seven, seven, our score after one. On first down. It's Gordon, and able to surge forward for about five yards down to the 10. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Now a 10th carry for Melvin Gordon. And he takes it in for a Charger touchdown. Melvin Gordon, his second touchdown of the game, giving him 12 on the season. And the Chargers have taken the lead. And always a good first half when you can hit pay dirt twice. And it never hurts to have that good feeling as the game moves on. Just think about halftime. If, it, if that's is all he gets, he'll just sit there at the half and think, all right, two already. I can get some more. I can get some more. And he'll be encouraging his offensive line to create some space. Extra point by Badgley, up and good. And that makes the score 14 to 7. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it's capped off by a touchdown run coming from Melvin Gordon. This will be taken about the 12. And a nice job there as he gets this one up just shy of the 35-yard line at the 34. A first look at the NFL scoreboard comes from down in Arizona. It's the Rams that have grabbed the early lead. And we'll try and keep you updated on those events and others around the league as we continue through this one. They'll run here with Lindsey. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Flacco off play action. And that going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. The Broncos on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This time they face a third and two. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. Another example right there how this defense really is winning the entire game at the point of attack. Yeah, right there at the line of scrimmage because they are dominating. It allows their interior guys to get upfield and spill into the backfield. So how are you going to combat that? You know, because they bring in your tight end, keep him in, your running backs, they have to step forward. Bottom line, 
Your offensive line has to block them first to give yourself a chance. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. Holding offense. The decision is to decline it and not give them the down back. They might as well have sent a skywriter above the stadium saying, we don't think you can get the first down against our defense by that decision. This pass finds its way to Williams. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. Give him 15 yards on that one and a charge of first down. First down, Rivers. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Rivers throwing complete to his tight end, Henry. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. The last catch did get three, but they're still left needing seven yards on third down. Rivers to throw it. And that'll be incomplete. Now they took their shot all right, but it comes up empty. And it's fourth down. On is the Chargers punter now. As he'll punt it away for the second time. And now a high kick trying to pin him back. Now a fair catch is called for and taken a few yards across midfield. Denver offense at the line, ready to go. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. Flacco from midfield. And a throw there going to be incomplete. The Broncos send out their punter now. They'll boot it away from about his 35. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. I'm darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. The Charger drive about to get going. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. And he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped. But I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Running on first down, Eckler. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. From the 38, Rivers. That is incomplete. Whenever I see a drop like that, I have to kind of take a step back and check myself a little bit. So used to seeing those big guys make big-time spectacular plays that when they drop one, I have to remind myself, we ask a lot out of these guys. Block and catch the football, not easily done in today's NFL. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Well, they'll get the yardage, but they hate to see him take that hit. You're always trying to cool off a big-time guy throwing the ball, but you have to know when to back off, pull up, and not hit him. There's the penalty. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll bring up a second and 11. On second down, Eckler. And he's got about five yards as he's taken down right at the 25. 
The Chargers on third down. Just one for three thus far. This will be third and six. Throwing. Rivers. Hard throw. Incomplete. By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over into your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, we're not talking about our on-air commentary. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual for you. My bad. Normally, you run a really tight ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete pass, I'm going to try to tighten things up here for this next play. The Chargers, a team that's really been plagued by poor field goal kicking the last decade or so, but I think they feel they've solved their problems with Badgley. I would say so. He went 15 for 16 in 10 games last season, undrafted out of Miami. And remember, he had five field goals in the playoffs against the Baltimore Ravens. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Only a yard of the pickup there, so it leaves them needing a conversion here on third and a tough nine. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They've got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. And that's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the Chargers will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and 10. So Rivers will lead the Chargers up first and 10 at their own 13. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. He's got a man. That's Keenan Allen. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Rivers now. He's got the hook up to Dylan Cantrell. And down he'll go at the 25. They'll run on first down. Gordon. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 18 big yards on that one, and a charger first. A gain of 18 on the play. Let's go, defense. Let's get off the field, defense. Chargers. White, 89. Rivers hands off to Eckler. Breaks the tackle. He's got room to run. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down L.A. What a great surprise Austin Eckler has turned out to be. That's the kid that was undrafted out of Western State, signed with the Chargers in 2017. And then last season, 554 yards at 5.2 yards per carry. And then he was also effective catching the football. 39 receptions, over 400 yards there. A great compliment to Melvin Gordon. Out of the gun, Eckler running it. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. Four yards the pick up, first down. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. And we remind you, coming up at the half, we'll join who, Charles? The coach. <laughs> the coach, Jonathan Coachman, standing by in Orlando. He'll have stats and scores from games in progress, as well as scores from earlier today. The sorry, coach. Sorry, we get slap happy up here sometimes. That one good for 13 and a charger first. Throwing Rivers. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Rivers incomplete on first down. Here's second and ten. Throwing again. Rivers caught by Allen. 
and they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Ninth play coming up here on this drive. This is third and a yard. Now Rivers. Open man is Gordon. Complete. And he takes it inside the 10 to the 8 before he's out of bounds. The gain of five that time gives him the conversion and makes it first and goal. Let's go, D. To the air again here. Rivers. And his throw here is going to be incomplete. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. Again, it's Rivers. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. Two incompletions haven't moved him any closer, and likely throwing again, you'd have to think, on third and goal here. Rivers to the end zone, but it's incomplete. Trying to get that one to his tight end, and they've been trying to get the ball to him, but as of yet, unable to successfully complete one. But you know, there's usually a nice comfort zone in throwing to the tight end. Great sight lines, usually right in the middle of the field. Badgley able to knock this one through, and that will open the lead up now to 20 to 7. So they get the field goal, but that was a 14 play drive to get three. You sound like you're going negative on me I there, was, partner. I was. It sounds like, sounds like you're thinking the three is just not that good. And people say that we're negative sometimes. <laughs> so. Well, here's the deal. <laughs> Getting the three is good. Obviously, you would think on a 14-play drive you're going to get six out of it. But that type of a drive can pay dividends later on because you might wear the defense down. Now, that's the kind of return that warms the heart of a special teams coach. He'll be pushing us next time, Brandon, to make sure his guys are introduced in the starting lineups. These guys have such an influence on every game. The unsung heroes, remember, they have their own meetings, their own practice time. Heck, their own spot on the bench in order to be ready to play each and every week. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. Philip Lindsay, the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all. And I understand why they've looked lethargic, oh, yeah. out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. Came up a little short on the last pass play. They did get nine yards out of it, leaving him with his third. and Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Joey Bosa racking up sack number 12 for him on the year. Well, someone's been up to the task so far in this game. They are already up a couple of scores, Brandon, and guess what? I think they're just going to pin their ears back now and get upfield, get after the quarterback. It's been such an impressive first half to get that lead. And he put enough leg into it, but it's well off to the right and no good. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. All right, Brandon, thank you very much. We're starting to get near the home stretch of this NFL season. It's week 13, so let's get an update on what's going on. And okay, so much for our halftime break. Apparently, we're going to get right back to it. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Don't forget, later tonight, Sunday night football, we've got the Pats and the Texans from NRG Stadium in Houston. And then tomorrow night, Monday night football, it's supposed to be really cold up in Seattle as we've got the Vikings and the Seahawks from CenturyLink Field at 8.15 Eastern. They'll start the third quarter on the ground with Gordon. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. To throw is Rivers. Looking for Allen. He's got him on the slam. Another tote for Gordon. He's been busy this afternoon. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Three yards there. Good enough to keep the drive moving. So from the 36 now, first and 10. From the gun, Rivers. Open man is Cantrell. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Charger first down. A couple of first downs on the drive already as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. 
Rivers pass on target to Hunter Henry. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. The catch and run pays off to the tune of 35 yards. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use the momentum to launch another one. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. They run it here with Gordon, and he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. And now time is called as we've got an injured charger down there on the field. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Let him know, let him know. Going on the ground with Eckler. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. Two yards the game there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. Rivers from the gun on third down. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. These guys had to set up for a field goal their last time moving the ball down the field. They may have to do it again on this drive. That could be frustrating. Yeah, I don't want to be cliche, but at least they were able to get three last time. Three here, not the worst thing in the world. So three field goals that he's hit. Now this last one helps him stretch out the lead. He's been solid, hasn't he? And he lives up to the adage that every offensive coach has ever said to us. We want to end every possession with a kick. Right? For them, it's either extra point, field goal, or at worst, a punt. In this case, it's been threes. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Denver offense at the line, ready to go. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. Catch number 44 of on the year. It's a first down. Throwing here on first down. Flacco. He'll find Lindsey here. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did. And the Chargers rush is going to get there. Down he goes. Joey Bosa, he's the culprit, and that is now his 13th sack of the season as his great year continues. And that's his second sack of the game, but this player, disruptive in all phases, whether he's going upfield, coming underneath, you name it. He's a big-time guy you have to block. And the job becomes twice as difficult now after the sack. It's second and 20. This is Freeman. A good positive play there, nine yards, but still third and long. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. And that is incomplete. Flacco's pass, incomplete on the throwaway. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. From the right hash, this from 53. And this one is right down the middle. And that will cut the lead down to 13. So he missed that field goal earlier, but he says not this time. Able to knock it through, give his guys three. I like his poise. I like his confidence, his belief in himself. Sometimes when you miss that first one, you'll see a lot of guys sag and they can't make the next one. Not in this case. Stepped right up like a pro. The Chargers take over first and at their own. The Chargers getting set to go. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three and points is three points. And in this league, you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. 
So flag for the contact, pass interference. And I know that you're going to look at me and roll your eyes, and rightfully so, because you know what I'm going to say. Doesn't the defender have a right to the football as well? No, I just, I don't like defenders. <laughs> That's because you spent too much time with me. Okay, I'll side with you on this one. This is the correct call. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Now Rivers going to give it off to Gordon. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Call it a loss of two on the play. And they're going to face a third down. On third down, Rivers. And that will be incomplete. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. So make him four out of four now in the field goal department, and he's able to extend their lead. When drives are bogged down, he's been automatic out there. So nice to have a kicker you can count on to put points on the board. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And a good return. He's across the 35-yard line, right around the 36. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything that warranted a flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. The Charger drive about to get going. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. Now Gordon. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. First down, Los Angeles there with a pickup of 14 yards. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. This is Gordon. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Charger first down. It's a gain of 10. A first down throw here for Rivers. And he just gets rid of it. Throws it away. The wise move there looked like nobody open. Now second down. Rivers incomplete on first down. Here's second and ten. To throw again. Rivers. Nowhere to escape and he goes down. Von Miller, what a season he continues to have. His 15th sack of the campaign. And we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. They'll wind up with 17 on that one, but they're still a bit short here for Ford. Boy, they had a lot of real estate to make up there, but what a big-time play for them. Nice completion, excellent gain. Now they're in fourth and manageable. Just a little short, though, with that marker. 
So that'll be marked down as a 19-yard punt. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. Denver offense at the line, ready to go. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, hey, listen, if something happens, we have to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. A Bronco first down there, 12 yards on the play. First and 10 here for Flacco. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. On second down, a run with Lindsey. He fights forward for a couple with a penalty flag down. And the linemen, they're already walking back. So on the big tight end, hold it. Each and every year, we talk about very few tight ends coming into the league that are polished blockers or asked to do it a lot in college. So it's a constant struggle and a constant fight to learn how to do it without holding. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Now Flacco. He'll let this thing go for Sanders. And that'll wind up incomplete. Bold play call there. Now it's fourth down. And attempted a deep ball there. They didn't get it. But, boy, they're going to need a few of those to actually hit in order to get back into this game. Good thing they do have a little bit of time here still left in the contest. Decent-sized deficit, but not one that they can't manage. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! The Charger drive about to get going. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. A nice little completion there by Phillip Rivers. And you and I were reading the article yesterday, fifth grade. Rivers had to do a project where he had to make a poster about his dreams and aspirations. So he clipped out a football player from a magazine article and pasted his face on the helmet. That's what he wanted to be, and it turned out okay. Not so bad. Not so bad at all. Remember, he's the son of a coach. And on that play, I think he made the old coach proud with that completion. Rivers now from the 50. For Keenan Allen, that's complete. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. Welcome back now to Denver. It's Charger football, and they've got the lead as well as we begin the fourth quarter. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. He was trying to get that back to Allen. That'll bring up second down. Rivers incomplete on first down. Here's second and 10. Now Rivers going to give to Gordon on the draw. And an alley to run. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Give them 12 yards there. The Chargers have a first down. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower. That front seven reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing. Slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. Rivers. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and ten. Here's Rivers. He dropped it. Couldn't hang on in the end zone. So no six points incomplete. The throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. 
So yet another field goal to end the drive. That has been a very common theme. He's now hit five of them in this game. Yeah, Brandon, as an offense, you hate that you've had to call on your kicker so often, but you have to love the fact that time and time again, he's come through. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer Defense. exists for their offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they'll march off another 15 against your squad. Now a throw here to his running back. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Flacco toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was looking to get it to Phillip Lindsay there, and it's third down. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. And able to find Deshaun Hamilton complete. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. And again, it's Flacco to throw. Got a man open, it's Sutton. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Now Flacco. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Sacked back at the 31. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Now after the sack, Flacco and the Broncos come up third and long. We all nil. 57 is a mic. 57 a mic. Third down. Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. And that is incomplete. Flacco's pass. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Well, with that field goal, you can argue they needed to get back within two scores, and they did indeed do that, but still a pretty uphill battle. Still got to take two fourth-quarter touchdowns to get back into it. And as you and I know, that's a tall order against any NFL defense. They're going to need their own defense to make some plays as well to give them an opportunity. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. The Charger drive about to get going. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Call it a gain of three, and that'll make it a second down. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. He's got a man. It's Williams. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk at a 45. Roughing the passer. Defense. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration. Not a good play. He lets this one fly toward the back. Got a man. It's Allen for the Charger touchdown. Keenan Allen, his sixth touchdown of the season. For the Chargers, they're able to widen their lead. They were still throwing with a comfortable lead here late, and now that lead even more comfortable. And your first thought is, is there bad blood that went into this <laughs> one ahead of time that maybe they're seeking some revenge or they just don't like them? But the other thing that always hits me is, are they worried about playoff positioning, right? Are they worried about, do you need enough points in case there's a tiebreaker that comes into play later?
Touchdown, L.A. It took them an extra look, but they found out it is a touchdown indeed. The official says extra this one counts. Extra point by extra Badgley, score. up and good. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. The drive there only spanning three plays. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And last time, able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. They want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Flacco to throw here on third down. Oh, had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. Another incompletion. You know, it's a wonder he's still moving around back there the number of times he's been sacked. Yeah, he's staying out there, isn't he? And you don't think about it much in a game like this, but he's showing incredible leadership. Still competing, still fighting, not taking himself out of a ball game that appears lost. And yes, everyone, that was the fullback carrying the football. I know it's a dying breed. It's a dying position for a lot of people, but I still think it's valuable and important, especially one who can carry the ball. And you need short yardage. What makes sense? Go to a big body, let him plow forward just like he did there. It's still a big man's game. Flacco's throw there complete. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Broncos first down. First and 10, and Flacco looking to throw. Here's Booker on the catch. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. Here's Flacco. Making the catch, it's Winfrey. And they move this all the way down to the nine. The end result, 21 yards. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. They go pass again with Flacco. He's got Jake Butt as tight end. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. That's good for a gain of six, second and goal. To throw again on second down. Flacco. Yeah, this is caught by Sutton. Touchdown, Broncos. Cortland Sutton, his fourth touchdown of the year. And the Broncos get a bit closer. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Now Flacco will lead him up as they're going to go for two. Watch the run. Watch the run. Lindsey going to try and run it in. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. So the defense gets the stop. I know it's situation to situation, but who has more pressure there, offense or defense, when they go for two? I, st I truly believe it's the defense has more pressure because the offense has an entire playbook wide open from the two-yard line. You can run it. You can throw it. So defensively, I think most teams are going to be aggressive and force the issue and try and bring pressure. Getting set to go again here on offense, Keenan Allen marches back onto the field. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Todd Davis, the Broncos' leading tackler last year, up to make the stop. Bottom line. 
time, they want to keep this clock rolling. So they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. A free five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation it's game for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. A nickel set defensively for the Broncos here on third down. Watch the edge. Working out of the gun, Rivers. Open man, it's Allen. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. The Charger first down, Rivers hooking up with Allen. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down, went his way, it worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. On first down. It's Gordon, and he's got it across midfield and into Denver territory. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. They'll run here with Eckler, and he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Seven yards there and a first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Double tight, double tight. One, three down. Here's Gordon. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. That one good for 13 and a Charger first. Do my eyes deceive me or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. They go back to Gordon here on first down. Tackle by Bradley Chubb, the number five pick in the 2018 draft. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Now Eckler. And down inside the 15 he goes. It's a gain of 11 and a first down L.A. So it's Charger football as we welcome you back from the two-minute warning. And you'd have to figure they're just looking to burn these final two minutes away and get out of here with a victory. Gordon. A nice display of powerful running, but it takes him only to the seven. He's dropped there. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four at the seven-yard line. This is Gordon as they go to him again. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. On third down, this is Melvin Gordon. And they will get to him at the seven and stop him short of the first down marker. Four yards on the pickup there, but it's going to take him to fourth down. He's hit pay dirt a lot this year, but not that time. Yeah, I'm tracking right there with you. You're exactly right. He's found the end zone plenty of times. No way I can find any fault with the call. He may not have scored there, but of course you're going to give it to him. And the kick is good. So you wonder how this one might be remembered the next time these two teams meet. But until then... This game's over. Well, a little drama there at the end, but really this thing was already decided. The late points get scored, and then it ends on the kickoff. And I'm right there with you, partner. At the end of the game, they knew what they had to do. Just make sure you don't cough up the football at the end. Just take care of it, and victory was theirs, and that's exactly what they did. So for our visitors, it's an important win for their playoff hopes as they move to 8-4. and four. And they'll get another road test next week as they head to Jacksonville to take on the Jaguars. Meanwhile, for Denver, not much more to say. They dropped a 1-11. and 11, And they'll look to regroup next week as they head to Houston to take on the Texans. So for our entire crew, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.